Hey guys, welcome back. So in today's video I'm going to replace normal paste on my current graphics card. This one over here is an R9 380. I bought this card in February 2016 and ever since I did nothing to it. It is completely stock from the manufacturer. Um, same thermal pad, same thermal paste. I also recently started to play Ark Survival Evolved and noticed that the noise was higher than what I was uh, expecting or what I was used to from this graphics card. The temperatures were um, as expected, maximum 71 degrees Celsius. When I first got the GPU I ran Firestruck Extreme, got it to 71, but the fan speed was just um, self-adjusting. And now all the tests are done at a fixed 50% fan speed. Temperature, temperatures were still in check, but 50% fan speed, it sounds almost like a jet engine. It's not quite as bad, but it's pretty much noticeable if the game isn't really loud. And it produces not really nice background noise. So yeah, uh, tests. I don't know if I mentioned this, I did uh, Fire Strike Extreme, looped this for a few times and got temperature reading. I also played a bit Arc Survival Evolved, got the temperature reading, again at fixed 50% fan speed, quite loud, that is pretty important. And uh, well, let's uh, go ahead and uh, I'll show you what I did, well, rather how the graphics card performed before we go ahead and actually disassemble and replace thermal paste. Alright, now as you saw, the temperatures are fine. I mean, we uh, got at most 68 in Fire Strike Extreme, and we were between 68 to 69 degrees Celsius in Arc Survival Evolved, which is totally fine. But again, 50% fan speed is quite noticeable. So I hope to get the noise down, and we will see that if the temperature is going down, if I repeat the test with a new thermal paste because these tests are again done with 50% fixed fan speed, the temperatures are down, we can expect that the automatic fan curve is also not ramping up as uh, much. So let's go ahead and disassemble it. I have no idea um, which screws to remove, so uh, <laughs> I will just go ahead and remove screws until this thing falls apart. Well, let's see, we have multiple screws. These look like one specifically for the front cooler. The other ones over here look more for the back plate. And this thing is dusty. Um, do we have other screws? It seems... no. It, it seems like... yeah, I'm right. Uh, these ones I have to remove to be able to remove the shroud. We do have some standoffs as we can see here, so I think I have to remove all of them. Okay, these screws are all removed and I think we should be able to lift up the back plate. It feels like there is some material, oh we can actually remove the front Okay, I need... Oops. Ah, oh my god. Good thing the cooler is still attached. Okay, that can go aside. Oh yeah, and dusting would be also something. Um, let's see, the back plate should 
come off. I mean, it moves quite significantly. There might be like a thumb pad holding the back plate into place. I don't see a reason why it shouldn't come off. Is there another screw? No, there is not. Yeah, I think there's a, a thumb pad that holds it in place, but these screws are in the way. And they should be, yeah, they are also part of the cooling solution. Mm, do I need to remove them? Yes, I do. So we can also remove these two screws. And then I should be, oh no, what have I done? I just mixed them. Okay. Now I should be able to... No? Alright, uh, that was unexpected. The battery indication said it was full battery, but for some reason it just died. And then it showed n no battery. This thing is stubborn. Really stubborn. Uh, I think I'll remove the cooler. But I'm going to hold it like this because we have this front or this IO shield plate, the cooler could like fall down if I remove these four screws or bend the PCB because this thing is also pretty heavy. So I'm going to hold it like this and then remove the screws. Um, it's just a bit safer in this instance. All right, um, now let's see. Should be able to remove the cooler. Oh my God. Can I remove the back plate? And that's really stubborn. Finally, oh my god. Well, that's uh, that's the reason. The thermal pad had quite a bit of its um, face change material oozing out, and this stuff is quite sticky. Um, right. I think it should still be fine, so I don't have to replace it. Oh yeah, it's sticky as hell. That means that the thermal pad still works. But now onto the front side. Oh, that stuff is nasty. Okay, um, yeah, the cooler is, oh my god. I try to slightly bend to loosen the thermal paste, but oh, wow. It's really stuck. What you cannot do is try to pull away. This could damage the graphics card, so be really careful if you're doing this. And yeah, that's that's just five years of dried thermal paste. But it doesn't feel dried actually, it just feels like very, very sticky. Let's see. We do have Let's see. Am I missing a screw? No, all the screws are removed. We do have, however, a thick thermal pad on the back, which might be the same type that was sticking over here, and this is just really difficult. Yeah, it's, I think, it's, oh my god. Yeah, that was the same type. That came a bit quicker apart than I thought it would. Okay, so we have these pads. They, well, they all feel totally fine. So I'll leave them where they are. The GPU and the cooler need to be cleaned off. The paste, oh, it's yeah, it's 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 still fine, but it is a bit dry. So definitely worth replacing. If you 
do this kind of stuff. Be careful not to get like alcohol onto the uh, pads. Now this, the stuff that is oozing out, um, well, it, it's, it's a bit nasty, but this is actually what's inside of thermal pads. Thermal pads use face changing materials, which are, for example, um, how is it called? Uh, candle wax. A uh, candle wax, for example, is a face changing material. Now, candle, candle wax is not used in thermal pads, but these uh, liquids are essentially changing face depending on temperature. And the, the, the exact way this works, I'm not too sure, uh, but the, the stuff that is oozing out is just a natural effect that happens. Because um, we have like the, the thermal pads are like a sponge like material, and this face change uh, stuff is sitting in the um, in closed cavities, but over time it can ooze out. It's not a bad thing, but what you don't want to do is like uh, go with alcohol over the thermal pads. That could be a problem, it doesn't need to, but. It could be a problem, so just don't do it. You can clean off uh, stuff on the PCB if you want to, but it's also not necessary. It's a non-conductive material, so no need to worry about that. However, we want to clean uh, this part as good as possible. And we don't have to overdo it, but just get everything you can away and then it's fine that should be fine <laughs> finally we do have a circle and I don't know where this comes from but yeah um, interesting this discoloration is uh, I have no idea where this comes from <laughs> I think that should be fine. Going over it one more time. Yeah, that's okay. Now we can remove thermal paste on the GPU die itself. What I don't want to do uh, is push the thermal paste like all the way out because I don't want to get this in between these small capacitors. Now, the thermal paste is non-conductive. It's not a problem. It just looks better if you don't do that. Um, but that has no performance influence. Um, it's just, I think, unnecessary to push the thermal paste all the way over these capacitors. You don't have to be as careful as I am. Well, in terms of getting not getting the thermal paste over the capacitors. However, however, you have to be careful not to rip off any of the capacitors because that would be bad. Now, I thought I might zoom in a bit more. Still have to do more cleaning. This is just a cotton swab with some isopropanol. I try to clean everything off. One funny thing is that the GPU is completely unmarked. There's absolutely nothing written onto it. I thought they had some identifiers, like uh, on the um, GTX 970 I'm working on. This one has identifiers or older uh, NVIDIA and AMD graphics card for that matter. They do have indicators. Now I can't show that right now. Um, I do have, oops, I do have, however, 
an IMD card over here. This one is an HD 5670. This has an identifier and it's an IMD card. Or these other ones like uh, this is an NVIDIA card identifier number and others you cannot really see right now. Or this older AMD card. This is an AMD, yeah, it's an AMD card, but the new ones, or rather this one, has absolutely, absolutely no identifier. So one last round of alcohol, then we can finally apply thermal paste. I think I'll use some Arctic MX4, it's non-conductive. I could use the GD900, but I still have to verify that it's actually non-conductive. So for now I'm going to use MX4. What I do always is spread the thermal paste. That is to make sure that I have enough and over the whole die, not just partially. That is always the risk. If you're not going to do this, most of the time you're totally fine, but I don't want to re uh, uh, have to redo the whole thing, so I'm just going to cover this. Also makes sure that you have enough and not too much. It, it still will squeeze out a bit, but not. Uh, it won't be too bad. Now that this is done, I'm missing a bit of a die, so it needs to come right to the edge. The rest will just equalize by mounting pressure. Now the cooler can go back on, I have to think. Right, it goes like this, so maybe zoom out a bit more. The card has to go on like this. So we need to line up the mounting holes and we have touched down. All right, and after everything is reassembled, which you don't have to watch, I'll do the same test as before and we'll see if this actually uh, makes a difference. I hope it does. And if not, uh, I really have to think about why the car is suddenly louder. Because there's no guarantee this actually was the reason. So let me just finish this up and we can do the tests. Now in this final test we get the same result as from the test before, with an ambient temperature of 24 degrees Celsius and the maximum GPU temperature of 67 Celsius there is a temperature delta of 43 Celsius. So all in all, there is a 3 degrees Celsius temperature improvement comparing it to the first two tests, which showed a delta of 46 Celsius. I don't think this has much of an impact, if any, on noise. Honestly, after seeing and feeling the thermal paste, I already expected it to not make much of a difference. Now, don't see this as a common thing. Most of the time, you even get a temperature improvement if you replace stock GPU thermal paste right out of the box. In this instant, the manufacturer, which is Sapphire, is known to make good AMD graphics cards, but I never expected the pace to be that good after five years of use. If you have a similarly old graphics card, you can expect a bigger impact on temperature than I experienced here. So I hope you liked the video, and if you did, please leave a like, a comment down below, and other than that, thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye!